I haven't felt this good about a game, honestly, as a better, just to, as an aside, and definitely not a Detroit game, since they played the Chargers a couple years ago, or maybe it was last year, whatever it was, I was like, Chargers are not going to stop these guys. Dallas wasn't going to get a stop, and Dallas couldn't move the ball. There, There is a, a an image that is going to be burnt into my brain forever. It is a woman in a Dak Prescott jersey, hands and knees, oh. somebody holding her hair, projectile vomiting gritty. onto the concourse, and there's a guy in a David Montgomery jersey, <laughs> grittying past her. <laughs> it, that, that, is, yeah. that is Jerry Jones on his birthday, on his 82nd birthday, got to watch the Detroit Lions dribbling the Cowboys' heads into the turf like basketballs for yeah. 60 minutes. And the the culmination of it all for me was, let's put this big ass sunset into the equation when we design this stadium. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be the brightest sunset ever. And I'm going to have my franchise quarterback. There's the young lady puking, <laughs> gritty all over her white boots. <laughs> <Gritty. laughs> this guy's gritty. And he's you he probably smell that. This is how stadium videos like that. Oh, there's even a Dak yeah. Prescott oh, kid. That's my favorite yeah. part. The it's, kid. The, the Cowboy kid. fan was like, it's so cool to gritty. I'm a gritty owner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me get my gritty in. There's a kid gritty. <laughs> that's insane, dude. The most yeah. insane, the lasting image for me of the game was Dak Prescott throwing into the sun. <laughs> the he throwing threw. an interception into the sun. So, look, Jerry Jones. I want the brightest sunset. I want I want to I want to blind Cedric Tillman. I want to I want to blind Jalen Tolbert. I want my franchise quarterback to throw the ball into triple coverage at the end of a game. I want people to be like, "Holy shit, what a cool feature on a stadium." But the best thing about it was the start of it because the the Cowboys were actually driving and then Dak throws that pick in the end zone, and then it was just downhill from downhill there. Downhill from there. <laughs> Great play by Brian. Great man. play. Great Branch play. Coming at, the and he, just the play before, I think he had missed something in the opposite flat, and him and um, I think it was, I forget who it was, was like, hey, I need you here. And uh, they were on each other, and then the very next play, Branch bailing out of the flat to make that play in like Dak's second pick in the end zone, basically same spot two weeks. Yep. C.D. Lamb, that thing's not looking – real kosher with those two um through four games this season brian branch 28 tackles nine pass breakups three picks two tackles for a loss and a forced fumble but tom tom brady said it you said it yesterday more importantly you said it <laughs> look at how hard the backups played look at how hard this team played for 60 minutes dan campbell is a puppet bastard it's not like he uses manipulation. He uses motivation. He he really appeals to every person in that locker room. He figures out what what makes them tick, and and he brings in the right guys. There's no guy in that locker room, him and Brad Holmes, that I can say it, it feels like it's bigger than the team. So late in the game, you know, when the the backups are playing hard, when you're really rubbing their face in it, rubbing it. And that's the Sean Payton in him, because Sean Payton's rubbed. I've had my face rubbed in it by Sean Payton before. I don't know if that's the Sean Payton in him, or if it's just the fact that last year going to Dallas was so painful for Dan, the homecoming, and maybe he felt like Jerry got that call at the end of the game, because it felt personal to me. Yeah. And the amount yes. of big guys he had that. on the field to run yeah, trick plays cool. and and fuck the yeah. the officials it was almost like a hey the first play clearly the first play that yeah. phenomenal clearly oh, he had a complete garage. bone to pick yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah that's what you said chris like think about uh how he galvanized a locker room like how easy it is to play for a guy like dan campbell yes going out and like making that your mission to be like hey we remember this fuck you and doing it like what they did it like three or four times it's like they were yep. purposely trying to get all their big boys touchdowns and conversions and shit <laughs> but Dude, that's so and good for your locker room you know what i mean it's good awesome. for your locker room and everybody they yeah. got the same penalty call during the game though i, I mean <laughs> listen the, i would have said ben johnson hold a couple of those trick plays like the penne soul play uh -huh. it'd be great right. to have that in a bigger uh -huh. situation but but dan campbell was on tilt yeah. And 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 Ben Johnson, I don't know if you guys know, he's got a villain face. Yeah. Like he should be a villain in when, a movie. When they cut after they called the Panay Sewell, when they nullified the touchdown, yeah. and he was just like, no, no, yeah, no, it was like he's got that a villain guy looks face. Like Lex Luthor. He looks like a villain. Yeah, villain, dude. <laughs> he really does. But the way he gets this team to play, the physicality. We've talked about the hangover thing. Well, Dallas, thank God they're on a bye. 
okay, because they would have got their ass kicked this next week. Um, I want to make it about the Lions. We are having fun with the Cowboys, but the Lions just have become this team that plays so physical on both sides of the ball, and they're built, they're built equitably. They got tight ends. They have wide receivers. They brought in Tim Patrick, who we've said, hey, they need a bigger possession receiver, and Tim Patrick had some moments yesterday. Maybe yeah, this works game. out. You know, great maybe game. maybe you can get the things you need out of him. Um, the front, well coached. Hank Fraley. They'll give you David Montgomery one drive, and then it's you know. And I found this out. Kyle Long uh, on his on his show, um, to pushing, pushing, the pushing the pile. He he did an interview with David Montgomery, his old teammate, this week, and and he said that their their nickname, him and Gibbs, is Sonic and Knuckles. Oh, well, you know who Knuckles is, Sonic that's and Knuckles. Good. But like, it really, it really does. That's a nickname that works for me because that is what you get. You get thunder and lightning with this group. And I did see a couple business decisions out there for Trade Dallas. The well, I'm not saying any names. What I'm saying <laughs> is, I saw a couple business decisions. And David Montgomery will make you make those business decisions. This team makes you make business decisions. And Sonic and Knuckles love rings. Sonic and Knuckles love rings, and and this year, oh. this year they got a shot at getting a ring. And raise your hand if you put them in the Super Bowl this year, and raise your hand if you had them winning it. So I'm just telling you, this looks like a team of all the teams that you're like, hey, they're supposed to look like something. This team, five six games into the season, including the Ravens, look the closest to what we thought they'd look like. You know, the addition of Derrick Henry, the first couple weeks of the season, you're like, I don't know what your identity is. You're committing a bunch of penalties. Have you put it together? No, but they put it together now. And Detroit, they've had, they've taken their lumps early in the season. They they do look like a team that can go the distance. The one big issue for me is the best player on the defense just went down with a gruesome injury. Mm. And now I'm hearing he could be back for the Super Bowl if they get there. So on its head, that's very positive news. I'm not saying that like, it's not even about getting him back. When somebody's leg snaps like that, and I tried not to watch the, watch the play but they put it on the highlight of every say on the broadcast they were like we're not going to show the play and then they showed a cut up of all the sacks yeah and then you and it, when they say that on the broadcast you know the second you open twitter or any social media it's yeah. like oh gruesome 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 but here it is anyway yeah ah you hate to see this but so let but me it show is. it to everybody in america and zoomed in for engagement and six different angles you know that was a freak injury and one that you know i kind of wonder what's the timeline coming back from that thing this guy's playing like a dpoy and he's putting together this run in his home state i mean it's almost like he's a it's almost like he's a superhero he really is like everything that you wanted him to be he is and then some and he's a michigan guy and he's a leader and he and he plays his ass off and he's a great guy and I just, you know, every injury you see on Sunday hurts. They're all that you feel bad for all the guys. It's hard for me to feel worse for Aiden Hutchinson than some undrafted guy that sees his future go up in flames. But I do somehow feel worse for Aiden Hutchinson because he's got so much going on. And there is the team thing. And they absolutely got to figure out what they want to do on defense because he's most of the pass rush. Mm -hmm. So guys like Aleem McNeil have to step up. Houston, when he's healthy, um, another team that might have to consider. Uh, bringing in a piece. I don't know if they're going to do that. I, you might think they just turn up the dial a little bit and bring more pressure. Um, but this is one that we're going to have to figure out if, if we are, uh, if we're the Lions is like, you know, we've really put it together. We added to the, the coverage bucket, but now we just lost somebody out of the Russian, Russian bucket. And uh, he, he happens to be Bat Batman for us, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and now Robin has to play like Batman mm -hmm. or you need a bunch of Robins. Um, and that's what we got to figure out. Like, how do they want to go about this thing? So, man, they tough, got tough one. A, a backup in Detroit, Isaac Ukwu, JMU guy, did a, uh, did a one year sabbatical at uh, Old Miss. Okay. And uh, yeah, so okay. he's there. Maybe he'll show you something. Maybe he will. They also Maybe have he James will. Houston. He had eight sacks his rookie year, 2002 or 2022. And they need an eight sack kind of guy. You know, like if somebody can come up with eight or 10 this year, be that guy, which is like a damn good season. Uh, but you need somebody like that, and then people can fill it. But overall, the biggest compliment I can give Detroit is they really do make you consider your why. I talked about this in my reaction last night, and I'm kind of being funny. You know the guy who, 
you know these motivational guys that come in and talk to teams are like what's your why mm-hmm. you got to figure out what your why is and everybody's like why the fuck would why? i have to do that why well this is a game where you got to consider your why <laughs> if you're the dallas cowboys you're going to the sideline and you're thinking about it. and i've been in games like this and i've been on that end of it where you have to figure out what motivates you because right now i'm only playing for my reputation i'm only playing for the people that are going to turn on this all 22 so i don't get embarrassed and so people don't question th- that I'm out here for the right reasons. And, and that's what Detroit does to people. I mean, the, Detroit did that to Dallas yesterday. Guys had to go to the sideline and figure out, why am I playing this game? You know, and, and Greg Williams, my old coach, he used to say this, and no, it wasn't some bounty shit, although we did play physical. It was, we got them locked the gates for 60 minutes. Locked the gates. In the game of football, when you play a baseball game, and you get jumped, you give up eight runs in the first inning, you're like, oh, we might lose the game. But for the next nine, nine innings, I'm gonna chew bubble gum, catch some fly balls, try to get a hit, like, and we'll be back at the ballpark tomorrow. To lose a game in the NFL that's lopsided to a team like this that's physical and is not gonna stop, they really did lock the gates yesterday for 60 minutes on Dallas. And that's a pro team that was supposed to go to the playoffs this year, and they're down by almost 50 points at home on Jerry's birthday. This was a massacre. Cooked. This was a massacre, <laughs> and, and it was impressive. And then you got the stars on the sideline, huddled up, whispering and, and talking to each other. Doesn't look good for Dallas. No, it doesn't. It does not look good. <laughs> if, if only it was that simple in the NFC East. Yeah. If exactly. only this kid wasn't carving people up. For Eagles fans, you're thinking, oh, if Dallas sucks, we're, we're good. Nope. Not the case. Not so fast, my friend. Not so fast, my friend. And also for Dallas, I know it's low-hanging fruit, but like Derrick Henry was available. Mm. You're telling me if this team couldn't run the ball a little bit, they'd be better? And they wasted it on on a receiver that is underperforming and your quarterback yeah. who's underperforming. Well, I'm not saying waste it, but what I am saying is like you got to come into the – that's a, that's an oversight. Yeah, thinking but you're going to have – but they have no rushing. They, have they got no no rush game. Terrible. No no rush. Terrible. Yeah. And sorry, Zeke is just it's he's not he's like a three. He's yep. a, he's a three. Like, yep. and they're not going anywhere with that with that backfield. And if they keep playing the way they are, I don't know. And then, like you said, to defense guys making business decisions, and like maybe yeah. it's because of the Lions, but maybe it's not. Like guys are getting to that point. In the a business now. decision is a binary decision. <laughs> It's yes or no. It's yes or no. Yeah. It really doesn't matter what's been going on. It's it's you have a decision to make every play. And when you make those decisions, it's a bad look on tape. 